All right, so I got a little message for, for y'all today about mercy. Um, and our responsibility to be merciful to those around us and where it comes from. And I got two really good examples. So one from the Old Testament and one from the New Testament. And we're going to kind of draw a distinction between the two and how they're related to each other. So it doesn't matter if, if you have a firm understanding of the Old Testament or not. What I'm about to tell you makes will make sense. Uh, there was a king. Uh, his name was David. Uh, God had chosen him uh, to lead Israel for a particular amount of time. Uh, Jesus actually came from the line of David, okay? So David was a, was a great king, uh, a man after God's own heart, uh, God said. But, but so there was a point in time in the book of 2 Samuel ver, um, chapter 21 uh, that it said that there was famine that came to the land. And so there was a reason that famine had came to the land. There was this king before David named Saul. And so Saul was also chosen by God, but ended up kind of like chasing around David, having it out for David, uh, kind of turned into a bad guy. He, he really turned from God, uh, essentially, and uh, the reins of Israel was given over to David, and so uh, eventually this was happening. So, you know, it says in, in 2 Samuel that that. Um, there was famine in the days of, uh, of David for three years, and David sought the Lord's face. And he said, the Lord answered and said, look, there's blood guilt on Saul and on his house because he had put the Gibeonites to death. So then it was said that David had to go make recompense. He had to go, he had to go make essentially a sacrifice so that God would then show mercy on the people. So here it is says, what shall we do for you then? And they said, essentially, destroy the house of Saul. I'm paraphrasing a bit, but destroy the remaining house of Saul. Bring the bones of Saul's kids to the Gibeonites. And in the end, it said, God responded to the plea for the land. And essentially, the famine was lifted. So what happened here is... God was punishing the land of Israel for something that someone else had done. And now David had to go out and make it right by doing something. He had to go sacrifice something, okay? He had to go give the sons of Saul to God through death, and it pleased the Lord. And, you know, God responded to that plea of the land and lifted the famine. So, what happened in the Old Testament is this, and this is where you perk up your ears. So, God provided the mercy, we provided the sacrifice. You understand? We provided the sacrifice. We had to go out and do. And as a result of what we did for God, then God found fitting to show us mercy. And that is a story that continues to happen throughout the Old Testament until we meet Jesus the Christ, our Savior. And in Matthew chapter 9, it says in uh, verse uh, 12 and 13, 13 notably, it says, I desire mercy. These are the words of Jesus. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. And so in the New Testament, you see a complete just change, like complete change. Now, God has provided the sacrifice for us through Jesus Christ. He gave, he gave us his son. That sacrifice means... We don't have to sacrifice. We don't have to go out and do anything. We don't have to go anything to earn this free gift of, of, of grace that's been given to us in Christ. We merely have to believe. And then after we believe, then yeah, there are things that flow from our faith like repentance, you know, baptism, loving God, loving others. Like there's things that we do because we are Christians, but we do it because we were first loved and a sacrifice has been made for us. And then we are to go and act. We are the ones showing mercy now. So instead of the other way around, where God would show mercy based on our sacrifice, now God has made a sacrifice, and it's our job to show mercy. Always, always, always way on the side of mercy, right? There's no situation where I think you get to heaven, and this is my personal opinion. When you get to heaven, and God looks at you, and he says, hmm, you know, that was a really good discretionary call you made by not giving that guy on the side of the street $5. Really good job making that call. He was going to go buy some liquor with it. 
No, give to all those who beg of you. Have mercy on all those who come in contact with you. You can't go wrong by having mercy. Sure, there's verses about judgment in Scripture. I get it. Judge rightly those within the church. Don't judge those outside the church. Leave that to God. I get it. It's all in Scripture. But the overwhelming majority of the New Testament tells you, Christian man and Christian woman, don't worry about judging nobody. Don't worry about judging the situation. Just love. Love recklessly. Show mercy with reckless abandonment. Period. Just, just show it. That's all you're called to do. The sacrifice has already been made. You've already been saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. And guess what? The only way other people are going to be saved is if they see Christ in you. And the only way they're going to see Christ in you is if you're showing mercy because that's all Jesus did while he was here on this earth. Now, yeah, he did judge those rightly that were within the church, the Pharisees. He, he, he put them right. But what he did was he showed mercy. And he died on a cross for you, me, and everybody. So let's go show some mercy today. See ya.